How's it going? My name's Alex, and in this video, we're transporting another ramp on the white load trail. If I'm not mistaken, this was the first load I did with the load trail, and then subsequently, it was also the first time I had any kind of unloading issues, um, which I mean, that's when the ramp fell off. Uh, well, it didn't fall off my trailer, but it fell off while they were unloading it, so. But anyways, here it is again uh like i just got it loaded so that's pretty cool and uh yeah and i actually just booked a partial too and the partial is only two standard pallets so that's gonna go right here and that's where we're headed right now let's go to houston i pulled in thinking i'm gonna be able to get some rest get some sleep I still got a ton of time on the clock, you know, I just figured that they're closed, but turns out they're not. Um, these things are ready, these valves or whatever they are, they were ready, and so all of a sudden the guy's like, yeah, we can load you. So here we are, all loaded, three pallets and this big ramp, and uh, now we can hit, get down the road. So uh, that's gonna be really, really awesome. I was not expecting that. See, this is why you always show up early, you know? That's that's the that's the benefit of that. So I just gotta finish strapping it, the sun's setting, so let's just pick this up tomorrow. All right, so I backed out of their driveway so they could close the gate, but while I'm walking around before I take off, I see this light right there isn't working. I don't know, you see this one right here? And also, as a matter of fact, actually, this one isn't working either, look at that, see? What's up with these load trail lights, huh? Well, actually, that one's barely working. So I think it's a connection issue, so let me grab my uh, little, soldering heat shrink thing in the bobs and and uh, let's see if we can fix it okay i think we found our issue out back here by the tail light um you know this is the problem with the load trail and this is the problem maybe i shouldn't be mentioning this because i'm selling this trailer in like two weeks uh yeah <laughs> hey well i'm gonna fix your trailer okay before you buy it uh but this is the problem with like smaller companies smaller trailer manufacturers is their electrical really sucks and let me show you okay so i just started messing with the wire back here and i actually disabled all my tail lights and everything but the reason it's like aggravating is because right here you can see oh man so right here they used crimp connectors for the main wiring harness to the back they used crimp connectors like what kind of joke is that you got to be kidding me this is the main wiring harness look at all these scrapes right Right here, look at these scrapes. This is the main one that gets abused the most where the snow is always back here, where the rain is always back here, where the debris is always back here. This is the main gigantic harness in the very back and what do they use? Crimp connectors. Really? Come on, load trail, that's a joke, dude. So I'm just gonna quickly solder these with my connectors because those soldering connectors really work that really pretty well, honestly. We'll take a look at that one right there and that, that one right there, we got lights. Awesome. All right, well, good news. We're somewhere in Tennessee. We're stopping and the load is doing pretty good. Uh, no issues. I'm so glad to be back in the Ford. The 10 speed, I've missed it a lot. You know what I mean? Uh, but it looks like it's also somewhat unreliable. I think there's other channels right now that are mentioning they have problems with the 10 speed. Uh, so that's not good. You know what I mean? Uh, this is why you don't buy vehicles anymore. All right, and just like that, we delivered this load, this partial. Tomorrow, we're gonna deliver the ramp. I already called ahead about it. But yeah, this is, it's, a, it's an awesome run, awesome load, awesome two partials that I was putting together. Um, it worked out super, super duper, that's exciting. Uh, he's just making a copy real fast, by the way. So, uh, but yeah, let's get back in the truck, because dang, it's cold in Pennsylvania. Oh my goodness. put you guys all the way over there <laughs> okay I think this guy Randy came in on a Saturday for me so uh, I got $200 let's just go give him $200 for unloading me on a Saturday okay a uh, hundred bucks for him a hundred bucks for his helper let's go were you working today or did you just come in to unload me no, I just came here to unload. 
just came to unload me? Alright, buddy, I'll get you. What? You're gonna do Come on. No, it's $200, dude. Buy yourself some lunch, buy him some lunch, and then You're thank nuts, you, dude. Man. I appreciate it. All right, so I made it to the truck stop, but I'm sure as you guys know, the there's li literally no loads for the weekends. And it's not because the brokerages are closed, it's that the shippers are closed. Now, there is a small, tiny percentage, like maybe you could count on a hand that sometimes you can get loaded on the weekends, but that's just so rare you can't bank on it so that's the problem with that so i'm gonna hop on central dispatch i'm gonna try to book some cars and see what we can come up with see what kind of options we have out there because cars brokerages for cars are open and obviously because most of the time it's customers residentials uh residential moves um then you can book cars over the weekend too so so let's do that all right look at that i booked two cars this is awesome let's go pick them up tomorrow though because i've already been sitting and so i might as well finish my 10 hours uh, so, but yeah, let's go pick him up tomorrow morning. All right, so right now I'm in Ohio. This is like a 1957 Buick or something like that. And this is obviously a Honda Civic two door, both coupes. That's the crazy part. I mean, I've done trucks, I've done crossovers, I've done, you know, sedans, but like coupes usually not fun to do and actually it's two reasons right Re reason number one why i'm not gonna haul cars anymore and uh you know because then we gotta we, we gotta get down the road you know uh but reason number one is this is the load before the last load for this trailer this load trail is gonorrhea <laughs> I recently watched Yes Man. Yes Man was a great movie. And when he says, when he said that line, it's just the funniest thing. But anyways, no more loads, no more work, no more cars, anything for this trailer. The other reason why it's my last time doing cars with it is because every February I'm due for insurance renewal and my insurance is coming up and I've just had enough with low vehicles. For example, this Buick, when I showed up, I was like worried out the gate right away. I was like, oh man, this thing looks so terrible. It, Cause the reason being is it's bagged. And when I pulled up and I saw how low the thing was, I'm like, man, these car brokers can't disclose that it's bagged and that you need some really low long ramps. But luckily I pulled up, it was, he's like, yeah, it's bagged and he lifted it. And I'm actually transporting it right now lifted. And so ultimately with these cars, it's just, I've had enough. Now the benefit of me getting my own brokerage is if you do need a vehicle moved, I'll just broker it out, put it on central dispatch for you. But ultimately I personally, Tow Pickle LLC, the transportation part of the company will not transport cars anymore and that means i'll be removing them my policy is renewing so i'll be removing them from the cars i'll be canceling my central dispatch oh the other thing by the way about central dispatch is more and more companies i call and they're like oh you got to have at least 35 or 40 or 50 ratings so just keep in mind if you are going to do cars there's more of that happening now than i've ever experienced don't spend it all on one place okay? thank you thank you get into this load breakdown so here it is this is the first load oh my goodness I don't know how to zoom but here's the first load two thousand dollars you can see it's six thousand pound dock ramp okay and here it is Fort Worth Texas to East Rutherford New Jersey that's where it was going uh, so that's where it picked up and that's where it was going so two thousand dollars now if you're wondering how many miles is that so this thing is 1587 on the miles and so when you calculate that that's a dollar 26 on the mile can you imagine right you're on the load board looking at a load that's paying a dollar and a quarter essentially for six thousand pounds and 30 feet and that's the load I booked first that's why I had to go to Fort Worth to pick it up first and so it's like uh, you know it's not a good starter load by no means but if I never had it, then I wouldn't have been ready 
for these pallets that came out next. And so that those pallets are here, Houston, Texas, to Clearfield, Pennsylvania, the three valves, 2,500 pounds. So six plus 25, that means I was right around 8,500 pounds. So under the 10,000, no problem. And where's the rate on here? This is, oh, right here, $2,000 as well. So, uh, so 2,000 a piece. And it's crazy to think about that three pallets was paying $2,000 and a 30 foot ramp was paying two thousand dollars so yeah uh it's kind of ridiculous but still the pallets like if you route it out the miles look 1457 on the miles houston to clearfield pennsylvania and so that rate per mile is a dollar 37 so it's not like those pallets are paying super duper hot or awesome either uh but still but regardless both of them combined worked out really well um so it's 1969 on the miles uh, with not including my personal deadhead, so 1969 on the miles, you know, drop in PA, then drop in New Jersey, and obviously that was a total of 2,000 plus 2,000, that's 4,000 dollars, and divide that by 1968, you can tell right away 203 per mile, so basically right around two bucks a mile. So super solid rate. Texas outbound has had some good freight recently for some reason. Uh, I, I know sometimes Texas outbound really kind of sucks actually, so I was surprised that I was able to book two really good partials that were you know over two bucks a mile. So um, I thought it worked out really well. Now let's move on to the back haul, which wasn't so good. Uh, okay, so two cars, obviously. I have no idea why I kept calling the car a Buick. Right here it says 1954 Chevy. Uh, and it's definitely not a sedan, it's a two-door. So, um, you know, that's the central dispatch brokers for you, right? That's why I'm not doing cars anymore. But regardless, whatever, Warren, Ohio to Leander, Texas. And this car is paying 10 25 so that bagged buick i mean the bagged chevy was paying a thousand twenty five dollars now for the miles it's 1396 on the miles from warren ohio to leander so kind of a lot and you know because we're only getting paid a thousand twenty five that's 73 cents per mile for a car now on an open car 73 cents is actually not that bad you know sometimes open cars pay as little as 30 cents a mile so in reality 73 cents for a car isn't terrible uh, for one unit but it's just not enough if you can only take two cars and so uh but still you know some money is better than no money i guess for the weekend so the second honda or the second car that i booked the honda right it was 1150 so a little bit more money and this was the bradford pa to Kyleen, Texas. Um, it was an army person at Fort Hood and we just met at like a Home Depot or Walmart over there somewhere. Um, so uh, yeah, the Civic, uh, they, they were actually complaining that they had been trying to ship the car for two weeks and they were glad that they could track me and that I got it down really quick for them. So um, so that was kind of cool uh, that, you know, I was able to provide a good customer service for one of the, one of our uh, service members. So that's cool. But anyways, 1150 on the rate for this one and that is what was it right here 15 19 on the miles so a little more miles but 75 cents a mile i think the other one was 73 but here's the issue so you could go 73 plus 75 oh that's like a dollar 48 or something dollar 47 maybe uh right so it's like no, 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 no. That's not how you count it. It's not a dollar forty-seven. First of all, I couldn't pick up the Honda Civic first. I had to go get the Chevy first, right? And because I had, that means I had to go to Ohio and then backtrack to PA. And so what happens is it's right here. So Warren, Ohio to Bradford, PA to Kylene, Texas to Leander, Texas. That gives us a total of seventeen. 35 on the miles so not bad miles and i'm getting like 1150 plus 1025 so i'm getting something like 2275 i think but when you divide it that's only a dollar 25 a mile so wait 75 plus 73 cents a mile gives us a dollar 50 but because you know it's not exactly in or out it's only a dollar 25 but don't forget i deadheaded all the way from New Jersey. So when you count all my deadhead all the way from New Jersey, right, that gives us total miles for 2136. And then when you do 2175 divided by 2136, that gives us a dollar and a penny, a dollar and two cents a mile if you round up or round down, whatever, whichever. But still, so coming out, I'm excited. I'm making a ton of cash. Coming back, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> going kind of broke jokingly i say that of course i'm not going broke because here's the numbers right so here's the total trip routed out 4105 miles that includes the deadhead in between them so there and back so texas to new jersey and pa and ohio and then back 
and then that's 4,105 miles and, oh wow, too fast. And I got, remember, 2,000 plus 2,000 plus 1,150 plus 1,025 gives us 6,175. And when you do the math, it's a dollar fifty per mile, right? Sixty, what was it? Sixty-one seventy-five divided by forty-one hundred and some change. So it's a dollar fifty per mile. Now keep in mind, my operating costs is a dollar forty, including driver pay, right? So it cost me to move my truck a dollar forty cents for every single mile. Now you might be wondering, hold on, Alex, that means you only made ten cents a mile. No, I am including driver pay in that 40 cents. So if you figure that I pay drivers right now starting 50 cents a mile and all miles, that means on this 4,100 miles, my driver would have gotten paid $2,050. And it literally took me exactly one week to complete this. So not a bad paycheck if you were a company driver W2 uh, running at 50 cents a mile. So really not bad. Two grand. Now, it's rare because, you know, I was really running the clock down to the last minute and I was really hustling to, to get it done. So these are rare weeks, but it just goes to show that they can happen. So technically, uh, that means the business made 10 cents a mile. So 10 cents at 4,000 miles is 400 bucks and driver pay was 2,000. So if you're an owner operator, technically you made 2,400, technically. Now, I've been uh, like, crunching these numbers and looking at these things and thinking and thinking and thinking what would have been what would have been the better thing to do would it have been better to wait till monday book a load that paid a little bit better or would have been better to just take the cars like i did and in hindsight because hindsight is now 2020 it does look like that it would have been better to sit and wait till Monday. Let me explain, right? You might be freaking out. Hold on, Alex, how is this $6,000 in literally seven days? How is that would have been better to wait? Here's the thing, right? Because the rate was so cheap coming back, it actually took a bunch of profit out of the good rate coming back. Now, yes, it equaled out to a buck 50, but if you figure, well, let's say we just got the bare minimum. Let's say we got a dollar 40. A load for a dollar 40 from PA to Texas definitely exists or from new jersey to texas right that definitely exists and so even at a dollar 40 my profit would have been not 400 dollars. i think i crunched the numbers i don't have it all calculated like i do with the loads and stuff but when i crunched it uh, so my profit right 10 cents a mile because my operating cost is a dollar 40 my average rate per mile was a dollar 50 that's 10 cents a mile profit that means times four thousand miles that gives us 400 dollars, correct and so if I just raised the return trip instead of at a dollar a mile to a dollar 40, it would have made my average trip a dollar 80. And so then my profit would have been, or no, correction, it would have made my round trip a dollar 70. There you go. And that, and that means that my profit is then 30 cents a mile. So 30 cents times 4,000 is four times three is 12, so $1,200. So think about this. If I would have booked a load, had I waited till Monday instead of Sunday to take these two cars, I would have profited the company 30% more money or three times. So that's 300%, right? Because so instead of $400, I would have profited $1,200. Now, honestly, this is one week, one trip. So it's not, you know what I mean? It's not the end of the world, but it just goes to show you how like I have to right now switch my perspective or my mentality from being a driver and just cranking out the miles to being a company owner and really focusing on making sure the profits are there. Um, you know, and it's a process. It takes, like, you know, even though I've been in it for five years, for five years straight, all I've done is just, I need to run hard, I need to put down the miles. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm having a bunch of like mental, like, whoa, hold on, wait, really? Three times the profit? It's like, yeah, so, uh, you know, it, this, sharing this with you guys has helped me learn as well. So uh, I'm, I hope this helps you too. There is one more thing I do wanna just quickly go over and that's ELD. Guys, while I was sitting in Pennsylvania, one of you guys came, come up, came up to me and said, hey Alex, you know, uh, I've been in a hot chat now for a year and I got into it because I was watching your videos and I appreciate all your videos because they've helped me a lot and I've made a lot of money, but, but here's a big thing. I have, I only once I've grossed more than $4,000 in a week, only once. And I was sitting there listening to him and I was like, wait, hold on, one time in a whole year, you've grossed over 4,000? He's like, yes. I'm like, that doesn't sound right. You're doing something wrong. Talk to me about your loads. And I, when we go through, we sit down in the restaurant, we go through his last 10 loads, all similar paying loads to me. And then I go to his clock, his ELD. I'm like, show me your ELD. How are you running your clock? And it turns out that his religion 
was to make sure he takes a restart on Sunday. So that means instead of taking a nice load over the weekend, he would take a short load and then so that he can do a restart so that Monday he could go deliver that load. And consistently, we looked at the last 10 weeks in a row, consistently his hours worked, his on-duty time was 35 to 45 hours, okay? Now, keep in mind, I just had a $6,100 week. When I was talking to him, I already booked those cars, right? And so I knew I was gonna do over $6,000 that week and in a legit 70 hour work week. I didn't like, there was no, I didn't mark any time, anything PC or anything like that. No, legit 70 hour work week, just straight hustle there and back. And I'm in my mind, him telling me that he grossed, he averages consistently $3,000 a week. I knew there was something wrong. And sure enough, it was the ELD. Now, uh, you know, so it's like two extremes. On one extreme, don't go chasing a restart like, like him. So take that as a lesson. On the other extreme, don't haul a super cheap load, especially when you came out for really good money. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, so I'm over here right now in this video and the guy I sat down and talked to for like over an hour, he was on, on this side. I don't know. I feel like I've been talking for way too long, but I appreciate you guys watching and let me know in the comments below what you guys think and I will see you in the next video. Bye.